leaving Nauvoo and the trek west. Because of increasing persecution of the saints and threats from the church enemies, church leaders announced on September 24, 1845, that the saints would leave Naubu the following spring. Even though the saints knew they would have to leave Illinois, they increased their efforts to complete the temple before they left. After the martyrdom of Joseph Smith, the saints worked under the direction of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles to complete the original Naubu temple as quickly as possible. More than a thousand men donated every tenth day in labor. Louisa Decker, a young girl, was impressed that her mother sold her china dishes and a fine bed quilt as her temple contribution. Other Latter Saints, Latter Day Saints gave horses, wagons, cows, pork, and grain to aid in the temple construction. The women of Nahubu were asked to contribute their dimes and pennies for the temple fund. Elizabeth Terry Kirby Heward gave the only possession she had to give, the watch owned by her husband who had recently died. I gave it to help the Nauvoo temple and everything else that I could possibly spare and the last few dollars that I had in the world which altogether amounted to nearly $50. Rooms in the temple were dedicated as they were completed so that ordinances could be performed as early as possible. Even the temple was not yet completely done. Once there's a room vacant, they use that temporarily for temple ordinances. From 1844 to 1846, President Brigham Young and the Twelve Apostles made completion of the Naub Temple an urgent priority. Endowments and ceilings were performed there even before construction ended. Brigham Young recorded, Such has been the anxiety manifested by the saints to receive the ordinances of the temple, and such the anxiety on our part to administer to them that I have given myself up entirely to the work of the Lord in the temple, night and day, not taking more than four hours sleep upon an average per day and going home but once a week. Before his death, the prophet Joseph Smith had administered the temple endowment ceremony to a small group of men and women. On December 10, 1845, these men and women began administering temple ordinances to other members in the dedicated temple rooms. In addition to the men who work in the temple, 36 women became ordinance workers in the Naubu temple, working round the clock during the winter of 1845 to 46 to administer the ordinances to as many as possible before the exodus. I worked in the temple every day without cessation until it was closed, recalled Elizabeth Ann Whitney, one of the 36. I gave myself my time and attention to that mission. Dozens of other women washed the clothing and prepared the food that physically sustained that remarkable undertaking. Between December 10, 1845 and February 7, 1846, the date when the saints began to depart for their journey west, approximately 5,615 saints received the ordinance of the endowment in the Naubu Temple, and numerous families were sealed there. So to ponder on this, what can we learn from the saints' sacrifices to complete the temple, even when they knew they would soon be leaving Nauvoo. Will receiving these temple ordinances help them in their coming journey of over a thousand miles to find refuge in the Western United States? How could that be? As you ponder that, let's try to listen to some of the members who said something about it. Sister Sarah Rich, 
if it had not been for the faith and knowledge that was bestowed upon us in that temple by the influence and help of the Spirit of the Lord, our journey would have been like one taking a leap in the dark. Elder Robert D. Hale said, Our pioneer ancestors were sealed together as families in Nauvoo. Their covenants with the Lord in the Nauvoo Temple were a protection for them during their journey westward, as it is for each of us today and throughout our lives. For these early saints, their participation in the ordinances of the temple was essential to their testimonies as they faced the hardships, the angry mobs, being driven from comfortable homes in Naubu, and the long and difficult journey ahead. They have been endowed with power in the holy temple. Husband and wife were sealed to each other. Children were sealed to their parents. Many lost families Many lost family members to death along the way, but they knew that wasn't the end of them. They had been sealed in the temple for all eternity. After the Latter-day Saints left Nahubu, the temple they had built was got by fire in 1848 and then almost completely leveled by a tornado in 1850. Because of excessive rain and insufficient supplies, the saints who left Nahubu in February 1846 spent four months making the 300-mile journey across Iowa. Here's Nahubu, and this is where they stayed temporarily for some few months, and when it was time to go, they proceed this way until they reach Salt Lake. So as you can see, red means major LDS settlements. So when they go to a certain place, they settle for a while. It was not a continued uh, journey. Some settled on these areas that are in blue dots. So they, as they travel, they reach certain place and then they stop for a while, and then later, they also move on. Now, since they did not leave Nahubu as one big group, the first group that, that left Nahubu when they reached here, they built something, a house, they plant something, so that when they leave, the next batch, when they arrive, they have a shelter. They have food to eat. So that's the instruction given to them by Brigham Young. The first group of pioneers left winter quarters on April 5, 1847. They traveled more than uh, a thousand miles and arrived in the Salt Lake Valley in late July. 1847. On July 24, 1847, President Brigham Young entered the valley and received confirmation that the saints had found their new home. Upon seeing the place, he said, this is the place. So I want you to ponder for a while. Why did they continue to complete the temple even though they knew that they would soon be leaving Naubu? How are you inspired by this?